In this video, I want to help you to appreciate why the center of mass of an object is such a significant point. In a typical physics course, students spend a lot of time learning to find the center of mass before they find out why they should care. In this video, I'm going to show you some of the cool aspects of the center of mass. And in a later video, you'll have a chance to see how physics can explain why the center of mass behaves the way it does. To begin, I want to show you a movie I made with one of my students. I asked the student to toss a pair of scissors through the air while I took a slow-mo movie on my iPhone. The motion at first looks pretty complicated, but there's actually one point that follows a simple parabolic trajectory, and that point is the center of mass. So that's the first cool fact about the center of mass. When an object is a projectile, the center of mass follows a parabolic trajectory, even though the other points on the object follow more complicated paths. So here's a still shot of the scissors, and the point that followed the parabolic trajectory, the center of mass, is right about here. By the way, the pink and white band on the right is just a hair elastic that I used to bind the scissors together so they wouldn't open up during the flight. Okay, so for my second trick, I asked that same student to suspend a pair of scissors from a pencil. The student isn't touching the scissors at all, they're just holding the pencil and the scissors are allowed to settle in a hanging position. When any object is suspended in this way, the center of mass always ends up on the line below the point of suspension. And by suspending the scissors from a second point, we got a second line. And the place where those two lines cross locates the center of mass of the scissors. So this method may be used to locate the center of mass for any object. Yet a third way to find the center of mass of an object is by balancing. So in this still shot, you can see my student balancing the scissors carefully on one finger. As you can see, the student's finger is right below the point that has already been identified as the center of mass. The only way to get an object to balance like this is to place the support, which in this case is the fingertip, right below the center of mass. So now you've seen three different ways to locate the center of mass of an object. And let me end by showing two more examples that I like a lot. First, here's a picture of Simone Biles, who you'll know if you were watching the summer 2016 Olympics because she absolutely dominated the gymnastics events. And I like this picture because it reminds me of the flying scissors. The motion of her center of mass follows the parabola, and this fact may be used to find her center of mass, which looks like it's somewhere around her belly button. Here's yet another example of center of mass, which is kind of wacky and cool. So a friend of mine gave me this little block of wood as a gift, and as you can see, it can't stand up on its own. But when you stick a wine bottle through the hole, the whole thing balances. So how does that work? Well, the block of wood is made to be just the right length so that when the bottle is inserted, the center of mass of the system is somewhere above the base of support, similar to the example of the scissors balancing on the finger. The center of mass of the wine bottle without the wood block should be along its central axis, and the wine bottle is significantly more massive than the block of wood, so the center of mass of the system should be not too far below that central axis, probably somewhere in here. Well, I hope that knowing more about the center of mass will provide you with some extra motivation as you tackle the skill of finding the center of mass mathematically. After you practice finding the center of mass for various configurations, you'll have a chance to see how physics can explain why the center of mass behaves the way it does.